All right, peoples, this is Ross. So in today's video, we're going to do another pruning video, another pruning demonstration of the fig trees. And we've done actually two other videos now at this point. Um, one, we did some pruning actually on our more mature trees, uh, more mature potted trees that also the same principles could be applied to of planting them in the ground and training them as a tree or training them as a, as a bush, maybe having them more spread out. Uh, we also talked about pruning our young experimental potted fig trees that we use basically for experimental purposes, getting the form really established. If you guys have very young trees, that's really the video for you. So we have one on mature trees, one on young trees in different you know, environments, whether they're in the ground, whether they're in a pot. This video here is actually on my trees that are in the ground, but we're growing them in a very dense way. This is my high dense planting style here that I use. And we've talked quite a bit about this, of why I'm doing this. I'm not gonna touch into that, but um, this is really a very specific video for not too many of you guys. Um, you know, this is, I don't imagine too many of you guys are doing this just yet, but this is the kind of video, uh, the kind of pruning style that you're gonna try to expect if you're gonna be doing this similar uh, system of planting that I have here. Um, it's really, really quite simple because what we do every year is we use the cut and cover method where we chop this entire tree back to six to 12 inches and then we cover them all with straw and tarps. And this is very dense, right? So this tree here, which is huge, I mean, it was, it was almost 13 feet tall, the Smith here. Behind it is a Violet de Bordeaux, which is about 10 feet or maybe nine feet tall. And then my pastel de air here on the left is just a similar situation where extremely vigorous old trees. I mean, this Smith now is, in it, this is two years old and it was four, 13 feet tall. These trees back here against the house, um, I think now this is their third or even fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're three years old now. So what I'm gonna do as the cut and cover method is really my main method of protection. If I didn't have this cut and cover method and I was gonna grow them as, let's say, uh, a tree and I was gonna wrap them, I would wrap these branches here together. I would tie them up. I would probably cut them at a certain height, tie this up and then wrap the whole thing. And then I would unwrap it in the spring and these would come back apart and these would form a pretty dense canopy here that would really be quite successful in my production for that year. Um, so, you know, there's different ways to do this, different ways to approach it. And I don't necessarily think one way is better. It's just that this is particularly looking at it in a very specific lens. So, and that lens is of course, this high dense planting here. So what I'm going to do is just clear some of these leaves and things out of here. And really my main tool for this is actually gonna be a saw because what I'm gonna do is actually cut out the majority of this. In this two foot planting density here that I have, the main points of this is very simply light penetration and limiting the number of shoots from the base. Because I have trees that are just so close together, I mean, they're literally two feet apart, I have to limit the number of trunks from the base. This year, as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. There's, you know, 11. Some of these trees, like the one behind you, behind this, this tree here, this Nero 600M, has basically got like almost 20 shoots from the base. So it's really extreme. And if you have this many shoots, it's going to create a very dense canopy. You're not going to get that light that comes in that enables you to... Uh, to have success, to actually have fruit set. So what I'm thinking about here when I'm doing this is really quite simple. I'm essentially thinking about selecting four shoots from the base that are trained reasonably horizontally. So I have these little garden staples here, guys that you can buy. They're like three or four inches long. And what you could do is actually to train these young shoots, let's say, 
is you could very easily train them horizontally to open up the canopy of this tree and put the garden staple on the ground and this will essentially allow a wider canopy at the base because if we have a wider canopy at the base we're going to have these shoots appropriately spaced in the spring again i only want four shoots and i want them spaced at the right distance so this is really really key here guys to think about and i'm just going to cut out some of this growth that's just growing straight up in the air <laughs> because I don't want a very dense canopy in the center. I want this whole thing spread out. See how this is really getting spread out now? I come in here. Use my pruning shears, we'll take this out. Okay. I'm gonna also take this branch out. So now I'm left with basically this big piece in the middle, which in all honesty, I'm gonna take my saw and I'm gonna cut out most of this because I don't want this to sprout next year. I wanna have less shoots, as I mentioned, from the base. Only wanna select four. Then I'm gonna come in here with my pruning shears and because there's one, two, three, there's six shoots, I wanna narrow this down to four. I'm gonna select four that are spaced I think the distance that I want here, I'm gonna take this one out. And then we're gonna come in here and clean this up with our saw and just really clean out this giant mess here in the center. And this might take me some time, so I'm not gonna show you guys that, but that will leave me basically four shoots and I can uh, shorten these up a little bit. I'm shorten this up. I'm gonna shorten this up. Hmm. So ideally what you really want like out of this next year is if you can imagine, we basically, this is the middle of the tree and I can divide this into four, into, uh, into a two by two area. So two foot by two foot. So if I have, let's say, this middle piece here is the middle of the tree and we can just draw an imaginary box that's two feet by two feet, each quadrant of the box is gonna have one fruiting branch. So each fruiting branch gets one square feet one square foot. So if I could put some stakes in the ground, let's use this one here, these branches I just cut as an example. This is one foot and then another foot of way. Well, really it's actually, yeah, it would be a foot away. So another foot away from this would be about here, something like that. Then we have another foot away somewhere over here and then somewhere over here. So really the, the width of this tree and why I wanted to make sure that this, you know, was really spaced far apart, these branches to have them horizontal because I want these horizontal branches, as you can see, what's left is growing out in each corner of the box, right? So if they're going out in each corner, they're going to have their own little fruiting area here that's spaced one square foot apart. Each of them gets one square foot. So in each of these areas, I'm just going to shorten these back to make sure that I actually have the distance of these main scaffolds. You can almost call these things scaffolds down here uh, that I want. Take this, cut that back. We will also cut this back to about here. And then that's it. This is really what we're left with. All this wood can be used to sell or, or prune, trade, root ourselves, whatever it is. We're gonna cut out what's in here in the middle. So we're just left with these, really these four shoots here that are spaced evenly. And then next year what happens is we'll actually get ourselves some real stakes 
stake these guys in the ground so that we have four stakes per tree, four fruiting branches that are spaced, again, appropriately to give them one square foot of room to grow in. And really the same thing could be done for these trees behind me. Just lost a microphone here, guys. Let's do the same thing to this Villa de Bordeaux. Now, this one's actually quite, it's spaced out really well as it is. Like, there's a lot here in the center, which we're gonna have to take out, but if you think about this in four fruiting branches, we got some pretty good growth. We got some really good growth in here that is looking good and I need to get all these leaves out of here because I need to be able to see the branches to make some good decisions here on our cut. So we're gonna mostly, I think, focus on getting uh, a lot of this out here in the back. Man, this is really a mess, isn't it? just thinning out this tree out the center these branches are so long now I do like this branch here even though it's extremely thick and some people might have that argument well why use the thicker growth or why use the thinner growth I'm sure someone's gonna ask that question I don't have really a preference but I think I might actually prefer some of the thicker wood the older, more vigorous growth that has more energy stored within, uh, that's probably what I recommend the most. So even though I'm in this particular Smith tree here, I'm choosing very thin one-year-old wood down here. This is then gonna be permanent on the tree for the future and will be thick next year. Um, so it just is, just based on how they're spaced. You know, I like the spacing of this really thick branch right here. And I'm actually gonna keep this. Really simply because of that spacing. That's all, that's all really it is. Um, I like this branch actually back here as well. So that gives us two fruiting branches at least. We're trying to focus on getting four, right? So let's cut this back. Okay. Now, if we're gonna keep this guy here, because we've already got two sides of the square, we gotta take out this for sure. I do like this branch here. I'm not gonna take this out, actually. So this will be our other branch here that we keep. And the thing about this branch, actually, is that it's really pointing up towards the sky. It's on a, you know, the wrong angle. We want them really horizontal, in my opinion. You know, this accordion is really, it does well because accordion is so flat with its permanent wood. I'm actually going to get myself this garden staple, as I mentioned, and I'm going to staple this down, and this is gonna essentially keep it there in its place to make it a horizontal piece of growth. There we go.
Okay. I'll take this out. This out. This. This. Yeah. Pretty crazy how much wood is coming out of this tree, isn't it? And then I think what we'll do is actually take out this smaller one down here and leave this thicker one and train it in the right direction. Actually, we have one back here that's pretty good as well. But I think that's too extreme. So I'm gonna take this out. this out. It's tough to get in here and saw this out because it's just so darn thick. It's so dense in here. All right, guys, we're almost done. I would just highly recommend here, guys, that if you are gonna be doing any pruning on these fig trees, is that you really should wear long sleeves. <laughs> Get gloves for sure. I think I actually like. Yeah, this is this will be fine. I'm gonna take this out. I'm also gonna take this out. Okay. So that's it. And this one here, we get to bend this down. Well, we don't really have to bend it down, but we can bend it down with. Uh, the staple here. This one. Well, oh, staple is not going to stay in the ground here. It's pretty loose soil. I'm not going to be able to do that, but I'll show you guys what the end result looks like now, up close. All right, so there's our four branches. One, two, three, and four. You can see there's one, two, three, four, each in the corners of the box, a foot apart. So there'll be one fruiting branch here on the end, one fruiting branch there on the end, another one on the end, and then the end. So it's 